Reports are coming in of an explosion and fire yeah, on a train still rather near sketchy, but it appears that there was an explosion just There's a few minutes before 6 o'clock. Oh, our total rejection of violence and our recognition of the validity of both traditions in Northern Ireland. It was the biggest problem facing any Irish government in, since the war. And it had to be something had to be done. And if the Anglo Irish Agreement had failed, we'd have to turn around and start something else. The level of violence was extreme. The alienation of the minority community was worse than it had been even since the early 70s. And because of the hunger strikes and the lack of hope, basically, uh, a lot of young people in the nationalist community in the north. Uh, were uh, in despair. I said to her, it seems to me a scandal that the only place in the world now where British lives are being lost in anger is actually in the United Kingdom, in Northern Ireland. When I was appointed Foreign Affairs, I asked Cara Fitzgerald if I could accept the responsibility for trying to negotiate a deal with the North, and from there it took off. But Garrett was the motivator. Garrett Fitzgerald led a Fine Gael Labour government. They had huge economic issues to deal with. I think both Margaret Thatcher and Garrett Fitzgerald were taking huge political risks when they went ahead and devoted so much time and attention on the wording of the Anglo-Irish Agreement. Garrett was too good for his own good. <laughs> he was absolutely motivated by a desire to do good for all the people of the British and Irish, North and South, and to get this country up and running in a democratic way. He managed to gain Thatcher's trust, which was vitally important. I think everybody involved in the talks says that Thatcher wouldn't have done it for any other Irish politician. And he gradually brought her around to the belief that something had to be done, that Northern Ireland couldn't continue to fester, the violence couldn't continue. It wasn't doing the UK any good, it obviously wasn't doing Ireland any good. I said relations between Ireland and Britain are complicated by the fact that so many of us are of Irish descent. Although they don't like to say so, so many people on the island of Ireland are actually of British descent. One of my grandfathers was born in Ireland and, and there are hundreds of thousands of people in this country like me. And she said, hmm, now you mention it, my great-great-grandmother was a Sullivan. So perhaps I'm one sixteenth Irish or something. At the end of this conversation, she said reflectively, mm, if we get back again, I think I'd like to do something about Ireland. There were 36 meetings. There were also meetings at the summit level between Fitzgerald and Thatcher, and meetings between our minister here, Peter Barry, and Dick Spring was the Thonishta, and Sir Geoffrey Howe from a very very enlightened British Foreign Secretary and the then uh, Secretaries of State for Northern Ireland. But the intense negotiation really took place between officials. It was guided very much in detail by our government. It had its ups and downs. The public events are well known. The famous out, 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 outburst. It was joint authority. That is out. That is a derogation from sovereignty. On the other side of fragile balance, there was the sort of the Brighton Hotel bombing. We all thought that either of those could have destabilized everything. But the Taoiseach here held his discipline amazingly and did not respond to Mrs. Thatcher's outburst. And Mrs. Thatcher, amazingly, did not interrupt the, th the talks. In fact, she ordered that they should go on. The Taoiseach and Margaret Thatcher on the 15th of November 1985 signed the agreement in Hillsborough Castle. And that's a day that I won't forget. As a political reporter, I remember on the morning of the 15th, we had been alerted something was going to happen and we were told to get to Dublin Airport at 8 in the morning. We were issued with tickets and the ticket had destination was unknown, which apparently is highly unusual in the airline business. We flew to Belfast and we were then bussed down to Hillsborough Castle, kept well away from the demonstrations. There was huge security around Hillsborough Castle. Dr Fitzgerald and Mrs Thatcher have had nearly three hours of informal discussions at Hillsborough Castle near Lisburn, prior to the signing, in about half an hour from now, of the Anglo-Irish Agreement. I went into this agreement because I was not prepared to tolerate a situation of continuing violence. I want to offer hope to young people particularly 
that the cycle of violence and conflict can be broken. Our purpose is to secure equal recognition and respect for the two identities in Northern Ireland. Nationalists can now raise their heads knowing that their position is and is seen to be on an equal footing with that of members of the Unionist community. From 85 onwards, there has been an uninterrupted open channel of communication between the two governments to such a point that they have been working together, I mean deliberately, institutionally, closely together on the issue of Northern Ireland ever since, and I think that that's fundamental. As I, I maintain, the Anglo-Irish Agreement start off, actually, gradual evo evolution of what became the peace process. If you drive to the north of Ireland now, there are no soldiers on the road, no checkpoints. It's a perfectly peaceful country. The nationalists have a say in their own government, which is a major step forward. Throughout these negotiations, the Irish government's approach has been to seek ways of securing recognition of and respect for the rights and aspirations of both traditions in this island, a process which must of its nature contribute also to better relations between the peoples of Ireland and Britain.